Tree identification number 11, we're going to circle back around and look at some oaks, uh, some more Georgia oaks that are a little bit different um, than some of the other ones, but at the same time have a lot of similar characteristics. We're going to look at the black oak. We'll see the blue jack oak, the cherry bark oak, the northern red oak, and we'll see the overcup oak. Okay, so we'll start off with the black oak. Okay, the black oak is Quercus velutina. Um, as some of you might think, velutina sounds like velvet, um, and that does have some significance as the underside of the leaf has little hairs on it. When you feel them, you can feel those slight hairs on the underside. Um, also, while we're looking at the underside of the leaf, um, it's got kind of a yellowish tint to it. That will be significant when you're trying to differentiate it from the cherry bark oak. But this is the black oak. The leaves are roughly five to eight inches long, all right, and three to five inches wide. Um, and they're going to have anywhere from five to nine short or long bristled tip lobes, which will help tell you that it is in the red oak family. All right. Um, it's thick and leathery. Um, it's got that dark green um, and shiny top side to it. And again, don't forget that it is usually hairy below and it has that yellowish tint. So Quercus velutina, that is the black oak. Up next, we'll look at the blue jack oak. Um, it is fairly easy. I mean, we can say that it kind of looks like the laurel oak in a sense, but there's some distinguishing characteristics to it. The blue jack oak is Quercus incana, okay? And it has leaves that are oblong with smooth margins, okay? Um, it's gonna be pale and hairy below, but if you look at it, it also has this bluish tint to it, um, which is where it gets its common name, the blue jack oak. The leaves are anywhere from two to three inches in length and a half inch to one and a half inches wide. Um, typically, this oak grows in the sand hills of middle Georgia, and that is the blue jack oak. The cherry bark oak has a leaf that is a very similar to black oak. Uh, remember the scientific name is Quercus pagoda, but when you're looking at it, it has five to nine bristle tip lobes. So it's gonna be right there with all the other red oaks uh, and those bristle tip lobes. Um, and then typically the lobes near the base of the leaf are uneven. So you can see these uneven bases um, from those lobes. Typically, you have um, a pale color on the back side of the leaf, almost kind of a whitish tint to it in comparison to the black oak that had that yellowish tint to it. Um, a fuzzy leaf, especially on the underside, and fuzzy petiole as well. Okay, so this is the cherry bark oak, Quercus pagoda. Up next, we have the northern red oak. Quercus rubra, rubra meaning red, but not to be confused with the southern red oak, which has that bell-shaped base. The northern red oak does not, okay? Um, it also is a fairly, a really smooth leaf um, on the top and the bottom. It's one of the most shallowly lobed oaks that you have seen, and typically the leaves are five to nine inches long, and four to five inches wide. Okay, again, seven to 11 bristled tip lobes on the northern red oak, Quercus rubra. The last oak we are going to look at is called the overcup oak. Okay, so let's look at the leaf first. It's gonna have five to nine pointed lobes without bristles, so you know then that it is in the 
white oak family, okay? This oak is very similar to post oak that we saw earlier. Remember, post oak was the oak that was shaped like a cross um, and pretty hairy. Um, this is like a skinny version of the post oak, okay? So we know that it's definitely um, very similar to the post oak with, with that similarity in the shape, but the post oak is going to be a lot more leathery, where this leaf is going to be a lot thinner on the overcup oak. Um, five to nine pointed lobes without bristles. It's going to be dark green above, um, and then it's going to have this tapered base down to the petiole. When you look at the acorn, the acorn itself is almost completely covered by the cup of the cone. So as this grows out and browns out, um, you will barely be able to see any of the acorn um, right here at the bottom, but you will. So over cup, the cup goes over the acorn for over cup oak. Okay, so let's review real quick. First oak we saw right here had that dark glossy green top, kind of a yellowish underside, okay? This was the black oak with those bristled tips. The next one we saw had that kind of oblong leaf shape, but the underside was a bluish tint, okay? This is the bluejack oak. Then we looked at an oak similar to the black oak. It kind of had a whitish underside um, with those bristled tips. Okay, this was the cherry bark oak. And then we saw the very smooth leafed oak with the bristled tips. This is the northern red oak. And last but not least, we saw this guy in the white oak family without the bristled tips, um, like a, remember, a skinny version of the post oak, okay? But this was the overcup oak, helped signified by that cup that goes over the acorn. So those are the five trees in this set.